I am Dr. Pavitra Bharadwaj. I work as an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science in Jesus and Mary College of University of Delhi. So friends, we are here to discuss and continue with our discussion in the series of web programming. And as you know that in this series, we are talking about the various components of web programming. So we have spoken about how the client's front end web designing is done using HTML and advanced HTML. Then we have seen how you can add more vibrancy, more dynamism to your design elements by using the style sheets. Now we are talking about how to create dynamic and responsive web pages which are going to act, which are going to do some kind of calculation, which are going to do some kind of customization according to the user's requirements, according to the user's preferences. So here we are talking about a lot of, you know, we have spoken about what is scripting, where does scripting fit into the entire realm of web programming and what is the difference between a script and a programming language. So we were talking about primarily we are discussing scripting with regard to the syntax of JavaScript. Reason being that JavaScript is one of the most popular scripting languages which is used and it is also acceptable by a large number of web browsers. It is supported by a large number of web browsers. So a, a, a vast chunk of scripting is now being done using JavaScript and that is the reason why we are using the syntax of JavaScript for learning the scripting. So if we look at a quick recap of how dynamic pages work and where exactly JavaScript sits in in the entire working of dynamic web pages. So we know that uh, at the client's end, whatever device the client may be using, we have some kind of scripting which is called as the client side scripting and that is primarily done using the JavaScript component. Whereas at the server side also we require some kind of scripting, some kind of processing and that end we use other types of scripts such as PHP. So at this moment since we are talking more about client side programming, so we are talking about JavaScript. So we have seen the basic structure of the JavaScript programs. We, we know that JavaScript actually fits or sits into an HTML program and any JavaScript code that we write will, will be a part of an HTML file only. So it will work within a web page, it will work within an HTML file. Today we are going to talk about expressions in JavaScript. But expression is basically a combination of values, variables, operators and sometimes functions and an expression will always result in a value. Now the value of an expression, it can be a number, that is an expression can result into a number, okay. Say for example, our uh, values are A plus B is equal to C. If A and B are numbers, so the expression will result a value in a number. It can result as a string. Say for example, if you write a function, so substring function if you use, so then the result of the substring function is going to be a string. Sometimes we will also write expressions which will evaluate to either true or false. That is, they will return a Boolean value. So for simple expression, you know, for each line, for example, it prints out a letter between A and D and it is followed, always followed by a colon, right? So that is the result of the expression. For example, if we look at this uh, simple scripting example, so what is this? This is a script example. So we can see that any scripting that you write will begin with a script tag and it will end with a closing script tag. In between these we can write any expressions or any kind of uh, commands or any kind of statements that you want to accept. So here if you are, uh, you know, you can read here document.write. Now what is document.write? Document.write is the method of JavaScript to write something or to print something on the screen to show the user an output. So here we had discussed earlier also that document is the object and write is the method of that object. 
So some change if you want to make to the document object, you are going to use a write method. So in this further we see that what are we trying to write on the screen? We are trying to write on the screen the values A, B, C, D that is these are simply bullet values that we are printing and then we are trying to compute the value. So if the expression is 42 is greater than 3. So now this expression is actually this 42 is greater than 3. So here you have two values here of course the values are literal values and you have a symbol or you have a logical operator that is greater than operator and this is going to evaluate to for, uh, is evaluate to true because 42 is greater than 3. Likewise in the next statement we are saying is 91 less than 4 so this is going to evaluate to false. If 8 is equal to equal to 2 this we are going to talk about later also that what are the uh, what is the difference between an assignment operator that is a single equal to operator and uh, uh, an equivalence operator that is a double equal to operator and an identity operator that is a triple equal to operator. So here basically when you are using two equal to sign you are using to compare whether it is equal to two or not. So again this is going to result into a false and 4 is less than 17 of course it is also going to return into true. So what are we saying? We are saying that an expression can either return a number, a string or it can even return a boolean value such as a true or a false. So true and false values in uh, they are always written in lower case right and actually what is true if 1 is equal to equal to true. So when you are writing the true in lower case it is correct but if you are writing the value true the word true in upper case that is going to give an error. So this is very important to note that in JavaScript because we had said that JavaScript is a case sensitive language. So it, it is going to give an error if you are going to use the true in uppercase it is always going to be used in the lowercase. So there are three main types of uh, control statements. So the first type is the if statement. Now there can be some variations to these. So we will count those along with these control structures. Then we have the while loop and also the do while loop. So which is very similar to the while loop that is why it has not been mentioned separately. And then we have the for loop. So out of these the if statement is a conditional statement that is whenever in a program we have a condition where there is a fork you know where you have to choose between two alternatives you will use the if statement. Then if you want an iterative kind of a loop you want to create that is you want a number of times the same statements should be executed then in that case you will use the while do while or for loop. So we are going to look at each of these statements very very carefully because these are going to be the bedrock of any kind of programming that we are going to do because without these statements you cannot write uh, an advanced kind of program. So the first statement is the if statement which allows us as programmers to make a decision. So it is actually as I just said that it is used whenever you come across a fork condition in the program. So what is the syntax of the if statement? It is very simple. You will write if then you will put parenthesis. Within the parenthesis you will put a condition, the condition that needs to be checked followed by curly braces. Now in the curly braces you will write the statements which are to be executed if the condition is false. And then you will also you can also write an else part that is if the condition given in the if statement is false then what needs to be done what are the statements which will be executed. Now it is also very important to note here that if your if is having a single statement like in this example we can see that the if is having a single statement in this case curly braces may be avoided also you may not put the curly braces. But if it has more than one statement then definitely curly braces have to be inserted. Now this is another very interesting example of how if statement can be used. So again any script which we are using in the HTML file has to be you know it has to be a part of the script and the 
closing script and here we are initializing a variable. So, you can see here we have initialized a variable called day number and in this day number and then we compute another variable, we write another expression where we calculate the days to new year. So, we subtract 366 minus day number. So, here day number actually means the current day, right? And then we find out how many days are left for new year. So, if days to new year is less than 30. So, you can see the value of days to new year is being computed in the previous statement and in this statement we are comparing the value with 30. So, if it is less than 30, then you give a message to the user. If it is not less than 30, that is the condition is false, then you give some other message to the user which you are specifying in the else part. So, in this case we can see that you are comparing the value, you are giving a condition in the if part, you are giving the action to be done in the following statement and you are also specifying what needs to be done in the uh, in case the condition is false. It is also important to note here that uh, the comparison operators, the logical comparison operators that we are using are JavaScript specified operators. Also, we need to see that how the statements have been defined here, how the indentation has been defined here. Now, this is another example where we are using three conditions. Say, for example, you have you, you have three choices to choose from. So, in this example, you can see we are using if, we are using else if and we are using else. So, those who must have used, you know, in other programming languages, there is a construct called else if, else if without a space, that is, it is a single word, else if. So, here, of course, JavaScript does not allow for that single word else if, but we can use else and then in the else, we can give another condition using the if. So, here the else space if is going to be used. So, we are saying if A is greater than 100, do something. If A is less than 100, do something else. Else say then A is equal to 100. So, here we are checking for three different conditions. So, we can use if, else if and of course else. So, likewise you can have n number of else ifs in your program. If the number of conditions is more, for each condition you can put an else if statement and the last statement of course has to be the else. So, you begin with an if, if statement, you end with an else statement and in between the two you can have any number of else if statements. It does not matter. Then JavaScript also gives us a very interesting operator which is known as a ternary operator. So, we have seen that you know that there are different kinds of operators like there is a unary operator. Unary operator is an operator which takes only one value like for example, plus plus operator or minus minus operator. So, these are unary operator because you have to give them only one operand. So, we say x plus plus or y minus minus. Then you have binary operators like the plus, the minus, the multiply, the divide operators which are going to take two operands, you will write a plus b or a minus b likewise. Then there is a ternary operator which actually takes three arguments. So, one of the very unique operators of JavaScript is the ternary operator which is denoted by a question mark. So, this combines, this is actually a, a quicker way of you know doing the if else test. So, if you have only two uh, two way folk that is you have some condition and you know what is to be done if the condition is true and there is another choice that you need to do if the condition is false. So, in that case we are going to use a question mark or we use a ternary operator. So, if it will evaluate an expression and it will the expression is given in the and then it is followed by a question mark symbol and the code to execute in if the expression is true. After that, we put a uh, semicolon and then we put the code which is going to be evaluated if it is false. Say for example, this is a simple one line example. So, we say that size is equal to A and if A is less than equal to 5, then we write question mark. 
So, this is our statement a is less than equal to 5, then you write short that is if the condition is true the response is short then after the colon you are writing long. So, the after colon what you are writing is going to be evaluated if the condition is false. So, this is basically condition then you give the true value and you give the false value. Now, this is written in one line but if you want for clarity we can even write it in multiple lines that is also acceptable. Like in this case we are writing in the first line we are writing document dot write and then we are putting the operator. So, this in itself the ternary operator or the question mark operator is, is a great way of you know reducing or making the program more compact because you are you are reducing a large a lot of lines that of lines of code that you would be requiring for the if else statement. So, you can see here again is the same thing we have written a is less than equal to 5 which is the condition question mark followed by what is true colon followed by what is going to be the false part of this condition. So, here we know that in JavaScript we have a large number of operators like the arithmetic operators, the array manipulation operators, array we, we have discussed already when we were discussing variables that arrays are actually composite variables. Composite variables means that in one variable through one variable name you can access or you can reach to multiple variables. So, you use an indexing mechanism to identify the elements of the array. Then we have the assignment operator, then we have the bitwise operator that is which is used to manipulate the bits within the bytes. And of course, we have the comparison operator, we have the increment that is the plus plus operator that is plus 1, we have the decrement operator which is the minus minus operator that is minus 1 operator and we have the logical operator that is the AND operator, the OR operators, the NOT operators and we have the string concatenation operator that is the plus operator which can be used for concatenating two strings. It is not for arithmetical but it is for concatenation of strings. So, we already discussed that you know there are three types of operators that we are classified. We have unary operators, you know, which will take one argument. There are binary operators, which will take two argument. And then there is a third, that is the terse single line if statement, which chooses between two expressions depending on the third one, which is actually a ternary operator or the question mark operator. Now, these operators also they follow a precedence like in mathematics in earlier classes we learned that the there is a pre, pre, uh, you know a precedence rule for operators uh, which we need to remember when you are doing the calculation. So, in JavaScript also there is a precedence which is given. So, when the browser will encounter multiple operators, so it is going to follow the particular rule or particular precedence or the order of execution depending upon the high or low precedence of that particular operator in the execution chart. Then besides this there are also the relational operators. Now, relational operators actually they test two operands and they return a boolean result of either true or false right. So, again relational operators can be three types of relational operators that we see. The first type of relational operator is an equality operator. The second type of relational operator is a comparison operator and the third type of relational operators are logical operators. So, these operators actually they will take two operands and they will return either a value as true or false. So, equality operator also comparison and logical operator also all these three will return a value of true or false. So, the equality operator as we have already seen is the double equal to. Double equal to operator means that it will check whether a value is equal or not equal. Now, in this example we are using two operators together. The first is an assignment operator that is if you use a single equal to that is an assignment 
operator that is the value will be assigned to the variable so here we have taken a variable month and we are assigning the value july to that variable in the next line we are comparing the value of the variable month with the value october so you can see here that we are using double equal to sign that is we are not going to use an assignment operator but we are going to use an equality operator so this equal to equal to operator is always used with the if statement and then you of course you give the action which needs to be taken place according to the value of the uh, condition whether it is evaluated to true or false of course in this case because already month has a value of july so july is not equal to october therefore the if condition will not be executed now here it is also very important to understand that sometimes mistakenly students and programmers they will put an assignment operator in the if condition that is instead of writing month is equal to equal to october if they write month is equal to october in that case because it is an assignment which is happening so then it will always evaluate to a true so that is actually a logical error in the program that is if you are using a single equal to instead of double equal to that is going to be an assignment action so therefore it's very important that we we you know we protect ourselves from this kind of logical errors and we use the operators very very carefully then there is an equality operator of course and there is also an identity operator now identity operator is actually a triple equal to operator so in this example you can see that i have used two variables and i have assigned the variable a a number and the same number i have assigned to the variable as a string so a is a number and b is a string now when i am comparing a with b so a is equal to equal to b so javascript will do an intrinsic change of type that is it will automatically convert the variable the string variable b into a numeric variable and therefore it will return true as a result because the 3.1415 which is in quotes is now converted into a number that it is automatically converting it and doing it so it is comparing a number with a string but this string part it is reading it as a number but if you do not want this to happen then you have to give the identity operator now the identity operator is always going to return a false in this case because they are not identical to each other one value is a numeric value and the other value is a string value so the first condition will evaluate to true but the second condition will always evaluate to a false because the values of a and b are not identical therefore double equal to is known as an equal to equality operator whereas a triple equal to is known as an identity operator it's not known as an identity operator then of course we have the comparison operators now in comparison operators we test for more than just equality and inequality here we are going to test for greater than less than uh, greater than and equal to and less than and equal to so actually we have tested for equality and identity using the double equal to and the triple equal to and now we are taking for greater than less than and uh, greater than equal to and less than equal to so if we look at this script it is very clear we have two variables where we say a and b are the two variables and we have assigned some value to them and depending on these values we are using the logical operator so we are saying if a is greater than b then we are printing a message likewise if a is less than b we are printing another message and greater than equal to b and less than equal to b now in this case a is less than b will be true and a is less than equal to b will also be true because a is not equal to but it is less than the other two statements are going to return into a false value that is a is greater than b and a is greater than equal to b will be returning into a 
false value. But the other two that is less than and less than equal to will be returning into a true value. So, JavaScript basically allows us a lot of functionality in you know in case of comparison operators, equal, uh, equality operators and comparison operators. So, friends we will be continuing with more operators like the logical operators and other interesting features of JavaScript in the following lecture. Please keep watching CEC. Thank you.